Guess who's back? Back again. X-Men's back. Tell a mutant. That was stupid. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to Mothman Jones Movie Reviews, I'm your host John Maffio, and today's featured movie is the latest from director Brian Singer who directed the first two X-Men films, X-Men Days of Future Past. There are a lot of cast members in this film, it's probably one of the biggest ensemble cast in film history, it includes previous characters and new characters, but the primary ones include Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, James McAvoy as young Charles Xavier, Michael Fassbender as young Magneto, Eric Lencher, and Jennifer Lawrence as Mystique. And the story takes place both in the future and the past. In the future, is very bleak. Earth has been pretty much obliterated by these ever-evolving sentinels that took over, and they basically can adapt to any power. The story is very similar to Terminator 2, and the X-Men have to send somebody back to the past, 1973, to convince Mystique to not kill Peter Dinklage's character, who created Sentinels, and they have to send back Wolverine because he's the strongest mutant who can go back there because anybody else would get their mind blown by Kitty Pride. So he goes back and he has very limited time to convince and persuade and take action on this, otherwise the world as we know it is gone. Brief backstory on X-Men with me. The first X-Men, which came out in 2000, was the first superhero movie I saw in theaters with my parents and my brother, and I remember that very vividly. X2, I saw X3, I swear I've seen every X-Men movie in theaters. I actually enjoyed X3 a lot when it first came out, because I was naive and stupid back then. But, um, Brian Singer came back to direct this movie, and he is the king for X-Men films. And, um, getting straight to the point, Brian Singer returned, and he is now, you know, he's our lord and savior when it comes to X-Men, because X-Men Days of Future Past might just be my favorite movie of the year so far. It's most certainly giving Captain America a run for its money. Seriously, genuinely and honestly, hats off to the screenwriting, the directing, and to the editing because a time travel film like this that is so um, involved could have been so convoluted, but it ended up being very well told, well paced, very fast paced by the way. The movie like flies through everything, which is one of my only problems with the movie, but it really, it feels like a full satisfying experience and by the end, at least for me, I was emotionally impacted heavily, and I almost got teary-eyed again with these superhero movies making me sad and emotional and shit. Stop. It's too much for the inner nerd in me. I, I, I'm gonna implode. All the characters get their essential screen time, even like the side characters who are only there to either get killed or to do something cool. They all have something to show. But the main characters in this movie, Hugh Jackman returns as Wolverine, even though he doesn't have that much to do action-wise. You're invested in the story through him, and he does a great job. Everybody's already into their characters, and you can feel that, and you can feel the burden on Wolverine's shoulder, because if Wolverine fails his mission in the past, everything's gone. Um, James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender are great as their characters. Um, everybody, even Jennifer Lawrence, has a lot of time to shine as Mystique. The older characters, frickin' um, Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, as the older um, Professor X and uh, Magneto, they're also really good. Everybody in this movie, for the most part, does what they have to do, and in some parts, exceed expectations. I didn't even mind the fact that this wasn't a proper first-class sequel that people wanted, because you got the best of both worlds, and there was no real bias. There was screen time for the characters that you were familiar with, and screen time for the characters that you just got acquainted with a couple years ago. In the very beginning, things were moving really fast, and I get why, because they're trying to show a sense of urgency with the dire situation going on and all the despair. But um, I wasn't buying it until Wolverine got sent into the past. Then I was fully invested emotionally, but before that I wasn't. But the story, a lot gets done in this movie. And it doesn't feel forced, which is a great thing. Everything blends together well in this movie. The humor, the action, and the drama, they all seem to complement each other. There's not a whole lot of action going on in this movie. It's there to complement the story, which I think is a great thing. And you really feel heavily invested watching the action because there's a situation that's very dire. And there's one, yep, one big scene that includes Quicksilver, who's played by Evan Peters in this movie. And um, it's definitely one of the most memorable comic book scenes I've seen in my life. The whole time I was thinking, how are they pulling this off right now, this sequence? It's so masterfully put together. Which, speaking of, by the way, not just the action scene, but Evan Peters as Quicksilver, 
was a fantastic acting choice and a fantastic choice to put into the movie character-wise because he added a lot of flavor to the film. Even though the film has a consistent feeling of high intensity, it builds towards a crescendo that ends with a very emotionally satisfying ending that will make people who grew up with these X-Men movies... I don't even gotta say. It's all a very sweet, genuine ending that if X-Men were to end with this film, like forever, I wouldn't mind it at all. And by the way, those Sentinels in the future, they're like T-1000s times 1000. They are scary. X-Men Days of Future Past is perhaps one of the best superhero movies I've seen in my entire life because it does a lot of things. It's also one of the best X-Men movies, mind you, definitely, because it brings the best of both worlds and it brings humor, it brings drama, it brings action. They all feel consistent and, um... Everything is elevated. Nothing feels forced. And if you're a genuine X-Men fan who enjoyed the the good movies in this franchise, you'll get your kick out of this one and more, in my opinion. Even after sleeping on it, I pretty much loved this movie. I'm gonna give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It's a mafidociously darn good movie. Hell yeah, bub. Turning the tables to you guys. Have you seen X-Men Days of Future Past? Let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. Have you read the comic book that it's based off of? And if you haven't, do you plan to do it now? Because I am. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel so you'll never miss a video from me ever again. And check out Facebook, Twitter, and we live film in the info box. I'm John Maffio, aka Mothman Jones, and I'll see you guys next time. That's the part where if I had, you know, good editing skills and a good um, program, Wolverine Claws would come out. With sound effects, but I don't. I use iMovie. Fuck. Mm -hmm.